Hello and welcome to a new video about the magnetic field. Today we want to talk about matter and the electric field. Matter and the electric field. So we want to talk about what is happening if the electric field is not only in the empty space somewhere, but what if we have something there? Yeah, how is the electric field behaving? Let's think what we talked about at the electric field. Huh? So let's, let's repeat this from this. So the electric field, we had the following. Electric field. We also had the flux density there. So there was a flux density, which is was called D. This is the electric flux density. All right. And then we had an E, that's the electric field strength. Huh? And there was a combination in empty space. So this is empty space. There was this relation and this was a constant. Permittivity was called the electric constant. Permittivity is called that's it. Uh, this, this was the relation in the empty, in empty space. Now let's have a look, look at the magnetic field. Okay. Magnetic field, this is what we're talking now. We have a flux density, a flux density. This is this time B. We have a field strength, this is this time H, and we are again having a constant and we multiply this. This is also an empty space. And also this is a constant, however, a different one. Yeah. It's 4 pi 10 raised by the power of minus 7 volt seconds per ampere meter. So volt and ampere are switching places. And this is called permeability of the empty room, empty space, room, empty space in German is leere Raum. All right, so actually it's the same. Uh, it's the same. However, there is a different, there is a different constant which is binding those two things together. Uh, and what we said, if there is matter somewhere, uh, then we said it's epsilon multiplied by e. This is with matter, and this epsilon was epsilon zero multiplied by epsilon r, and this was the relative permittivity. This was a material constant. We said, okay, it's bigger than one. Yeah. This was a electric field. Magnetic field, the same, the same. So we have P equals mu multiplied by E, this is with matter, and this mu is mu zero multiplied by mu r, and this is the relative permeability. Also, also a material constant. Here this epsilon r was always bigger than 1. Yeah? So we could only reduce the electric field. Here in magnetic field we have also the case that it can be smaller than 1. So that the, that the flux density uh, is getting smaller than it would have been in the, in the empty space. Write this down. So mu r. Mu r, mu r is smaller than one. We have diamagnetic matter. Okay. Diamagnetic 
magnetic material. The magnetic material. So there is, for instance, bismuth. And bismuth, I have the values here, I write it down, it's 0 0.999 843 It's smaller than one, right? It's smaller than one. 0 0.9998 8 <laughs> Bismuth Copper 0. Dot, what is this? 5 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 Copper yeah. Almost one, but not one Huh? Water. Oh, so we have here zero dot. How many? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Nine, 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 one. So these are examples. And you see, there's not much difference from one. Not really. Huh? And if we are is bigger than one? with paramagnetic matter. Material. There we have, for instance, air. Huh? It's one dot, and now six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's behaving like empty space, right? So this is really nothing, but you can measure it, yeah? Aluminium. Also, I mean, platinum. This is how this looks like. Eh? So, diamagnetic, paramagnetic, but never far off from one. Yeah. But there is one exception. There is one exception if mu r is much bigger than one. So, we're talking about numbers here now of 1000, 10,000, even 100,000. Then we have ferromagnetic. Materials. But in ferromagnetic materials, we have another issue or thing. We do have, if we draw this, so here we have H, here we have B, and let's say we have here air, okay, air. Then we would look like that, linear. Okay, linear rise with mu zero. That, that, that's it. Huh? So H multiplied by mu zero gives B. And now let's have a look how does ferromagnetic materials look like. And unfortunately, this mu r is not constant. Huh? So at the beginning it's very high. So we're going up here and then there is a situation where we stop this growing and then grow exactly like, so here we are in parallel, so yeah, we are parallel here. We only grow with mu zero again. At the beginning we really raise yeah? and then we will stop raising and only behave at additional fields, we only behave like it would be air, so if this is would not be a ferromagnetic material. Here we are in the field of saturation, so this is the saturation area. Huh? Saturation area. We are stopping huh? and growing. Yeah, this is this is how this this looks like. So here we have big grow. Uh, so this mu r in ferromagnetic materials is not constant. This we will have a look in next video. Show you.
right? And now I show you something, something else which I think you should know. Yeah? So this is hopefully clear. This is the analogy, electric field, magnetic field. This is the categorizing. Yeah? And now let's have a look. We have volt seconds per ampere meter, ampere seconds per volt meter. All right. So let's see what this gives. Yeah. Let's see what we might have. So we have ampere seconds by volt meter multiplied by volt seconds ampere meter. Okay, the ampere is gone, the volt is gone. What is left is second squared meter squared. And now, if I say it's one divided by second squared meter squared, this is then meter squared by second squared and meter squared by second squared and the root is meter per second. This is a velocity. This is a velocity. So actually, what we can write is that we have a C0 equals 1 divided by the root, square root of uh, epsilon zero multiplied by mu zero and this is a velocity and what velocity this might be this is the speed of light in empty space So the speed of light in empty space is a result of the electric field constant and the magnetic field constant. Hey, how could this be? How could that be? Yeah, it's simple because it's not only the speed of light; it's the speed of light of electromagnetic waves of electric magnetic radiation. That's true for light. That's true for heat. That's true for microwaves. That's true for radio waves. That's tr that's simply true. Huh? And because light is also an electromagnetic wave and we are sensitive to this wavelength, yeah, then we call it speed of light. Okay? But in the end, it's determined by the material constants. Yeah? Material constants, because here it's the same. Here, the speed of light. In matter. C equals 1 divided by epsilon mu. That's the speed of light. So optics and electrotechnic are the same actually. And also, what also is interesting, we had so-called jump conditions. I don't know if you remember, but when we have talked about the a matter in the electric field, I said, okay, if it's a conductive material, then the jump condition is that the electric field vector is, is uh, in an angle of 90 degree going into the surface of this, of this conductive material. And there are also jump conditions, there are also jump conditions uh, which come from, from the magnetic field and so on. And those jump conditions if you take them into account and think about the electromagnetic ray, then all those fractions, huh? so this, my spectacles, huh? they are electrotechnic. Huh? Because then the light is fractured in a way. Electrotechnic. Everything is electrotechnic. <laughs> uh, it's not that. It's not that severe. Okay, so next time, next time we're talking about this here, saturation area and ferromagnetic materials, why they're behaving like they're behaving. I try to explain next time, ferromagnetic materials. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.